we've got roughly almost 60 hours in the game we're sitting at like 58 hours right there we just made it to act three you know i'm being told that we've got like another 60 hours after that which is which is wild already i'm starting to see that there is thousands of hours that you can commit to Baldur's gate because every decision changes the game this is definitely not going to be my first playthrough or my only playthrough we're going to be playing through again and i kind of want to do a playthrough where i'm like you know more leaning on the good side and then i i want to do a playthrough of just being the most evil person ever continuing to kill all the vendors of which we've already done i want us to actually take a look at this video Baldur's gate 3 is causing some developers to panic Baldur's gate 3 is taking the internet by storm at its peak, a whopping 800,000 plus concurrent players were playing wow. this weekend, catapulting it to the number eight most played of all time spot. The gaming community has sung its praises and it's incredibly refreshing to play a feature complete game of this caliber on day one. But AAA game developers want you to know that this is rockstar level nonsense for scope, that it's foolhardy to set expectations higher, and Baldur's Gate 3 should not be used as a raised standard to RPGs going forward. Like a lot of people, I'm deeply excited about what the lovely folks at Larian accomplished with Baldur's Gate 3, but I wanted to gently, preemptively push back against players taking that excitement and using it to apply criticism or a race standard to RPGs going forward. Oh my, I don't know. Some things just shouldn't, you just shouldn't even put it in writing. Why was the first response to defend the current state of AAA gaming as opposed to saying, hey, maybe we can learn a thing or two from Baldur's Gate 3 and make our game better for our customers. This all kicked off way back on July 8th, a lifetime ago by internet standards, I know, when a writer and BAFTA nominee, Xavier Nelson, took to Twitter to express concerns about Baldur's Gate 3, namely that fans would use Baldur's Gate 3 to apply criticism or a raised standard to RPGs going forward. My rebuttal is, why shouldn't customers have raised standards? Taking it a step further, why shouldn't some AAA developers raise their own standards? Are we really going to pretend that consumers shouldn't be a little upset right now and hoping for an improvement in the industry going forward? Rockstar just announced a $50 remake, I'm sorry, conversion of the original Red Dead Redemption for the PlayStation 4 and Switch that has no mention of a 4K update, no mention of 60 FPS, and no mention of multiplayer support. The game came out 13 years ago and the Xbox port does everything they're offering and then some for free with your 360 copy. Go buy a brand new copy of the Game of the Year edition on Amazon right now for $30 and you're good to go. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, when released on PC, had furious fans citing numerous problems getting the game to run, frequent crashes, and similar problems on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox. Yeah, it was rough. EA apologized and is still working to fix the issues. Destiny 2 just released a state of the game blog saying, amongst other things, that they don't have the resources to release new ritual armor every season. But that same studio manages to create new armor sets in the shop for up to $20 a pop without fail every <clears throat> season. Diablo 4 unabashedly had- Oh my God, dude. This is not a good look for Destiny, man. You don't want to be known for that. No, no, Destiny is cooking right now. He's cooking. BG3 was in early access for three years. Sure, if gamers are willing to pay for a game that far in advance, actively play part of the play testing. Sure, AAA sucks balls, but it's not like BG3 just appeared. I feel like we play test things all the time when we play when we pick up games for the first time when they release i i genuinely feel like we we are the play tester i know like officially that's where bg3 was because you had like the early access yeah, the early access builds uh, the play test builds and whatnot i think it is paid off for Baldur's gate 3 it, you know triple a studios and other studios are gonna have to make the decision is this is this the roadmap going forward is this how we do things Every season. Diablo 4 unabashedly has several character skins priced at $20 each and just released their first season that had a patch that was so poorly thought out that the developers had to have an emergency live stream to apologize and have since begun working to revert those changes. We don't plan on doing a patch like this ever again. Okay, you need a more comparable RPG example of why fans are heralding Baldur's Gate 3 as a breath of fresh air? Look no further than Mass Effect Andromeda, which was widely panned. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with 
everything. Or Cyberpunk 2077 that made promises about last gen game consoles that it couldn't keep. It took CDPR almost a year to get that all sorted out. I'll make this as clear as possible to contextualize how fans are feeling. It feels like money has become more important than the core experience for fans. That's why Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3, and even The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom are being widely celebrated. So what is up with the excuses? A game came along that is amazing, is selling well, is being praised by developers and fans alike, and the response is, well, we can't do that. Well, sweet, if that doesn't get me hyped <laughs> for Mass Effect 4, I don't know what will. Xavier's tweet was well-intentioned and he went on to add a lot of important context, but I think it misses the perspective of the consumer. We don't know anything about game design or how hard it is. We just know that Destiny is deleting hundreds of dollars worth of expansions when they feel like it, that Diablo is constantly reminding us to buy skins in their store, and most PC ports have been abysmal lately. Remember, that tweet was made nearly a month before Baldur's Gate 3 blew up, and it was still contentious with fans speaking up about their frustrations and developers chiming in to say what felt like, game development is hard, you don't get it, be quiet. Baldur's Gate 3 is yeah. a game from a large, passionate studio that refuses to- Hold on, let me, let me just- Game development takes a lot of people, a lot of teams to get a game created and out the door. Dude, man, there's so many things, man, in life. That's just the way things are. I mean, great things are difficult. That's why they're great. And if you want to create great stuff, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. And I, I just hate the the comments, you know, from, from game devs. It's just like, it's difficult. It requires resources. And what Destin just said, be quiet about it. Don't complain. Don't complain. Because you don't understand what's happening here internally. Don't complain. Man, that's just a terrible way to treat your community. You don't get it be quiet. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game from a large passionate studio that refuses to add microtransactions, gave players early access so they could address any problems that arose before launch, and is taking Steam charts by storm. So why should fans not use that as a gold standard of how to do it right? And why would a AAA studio not look at it and say, hey, maybe cramming microtransactions into our game isn't a good look? When Mass Effect 4 comes out, I don't want to see a $20 Liara skin, and I hope that its performance is tested across all platforms before release. Am I in the wrong for not wanting microtransactions and a stable video game at launch? Credit where credit's due now. There have been some really good examples of AAA games like the Dead Space remake and the Resident Evil 4 remake yep. come to mind, both of which have been massive successes for EA and Capcom. Vampire Survivors came along and took the internet by storm last year. Do I need to bring up Elden Ring again? But that tweet blew up in the development sphere and frankly, the pushback is just ridiculous. Developers should be looking at what Baldur's Gate 3 did and trying to replicate where they can, not jumping up to defend games that are cramming in practices that fans are getting fed up with. And make no mistake about it, these decisions impact game design. Many games are utilizing battle passes and player engagement as a metric of success. For a player, that means more grindy missions. That means more reminders to stop in the shop. It means a boring grind because keeping players engaged is a key metric. Many of the people who came out to talk about why Baldur's Gate 3 shouldn't be the new standard have since walked back those statements and I'm glad because if the industry can't take a good hard look at what's going wrong, why fans reacted the way they did to Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 and then make impactful changes, we're screwed. Also, People seem to be using the fact that Larian is a big studio against them. The fact that they had a long development cycle against them. Really? Blizzard is also a huge studio with over 8,500 employees across several offices. They credited every employee at Blizzard in the release of Diablo 4. Bungie is a huge studio with over 1,552 employees across several offices. BioWare is a huge studio with over 500 employees across several offices. And Larian is also a large studio with over 400 employees across several offices. All of them have established beloved IPs with a ton of lore to pull from. All of them have a lot of money to make video games. And all of them had a long time to make anything they wanted to make. To say Baldur's Gate 3 is successful because it's aligned with Dungeons and Dragons is insanity. You think 800,000 Steam players are playing a game called 
Baldur's Gate 3 because of Dungeons and Dragons? No. Dude, I've never even played Dungeons and Dragons. Baldur's Gate 3 is like the first time I've ever played anything remotely. I've watched the movie Dungeons and Dragons, by the way. Love, love the movie. Fantastic. It's kind of ironic that it came out this year in Baldur's Gate 3 rolled out. But I have actually, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. This is a completely new experience for me, and it's been wonderful. And also, the, the comment that Larian can only pull this off because they have such a large studio. Look, I would actually think the opposite. I think it's impressive Larian pulled it off with the size of their studio. Like, there are way bigger, way bigger studios out there. I mean, 400 people, That's that seems like a lot, right? And I guess in comparison to the indie gamer out there, sure. In comparison to like, you know, what Ubisoft, in comparison to, to Activision, no, it's, it's actually relatively small. And we actually have a video coming out here soon about like, you know, things like engine creation, because we wanted to dive into like Bungie's uh, engine, which is the Tiger engine. And it gives you a little bit of a clarity of like what is required, how, what, like what the dev size team was in creating things like an engine. With that being said, knowing what I know after making that video, it's impressive that Larian has pulled off what they've pulled off. It's clearly gone far beyond that audience. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't know this game had anything to do with Dungeons and Dragons. And you know why I'm playing it? Because I like good games with a heavy focus on storytelling and bears. But anyway, it wasn't all <laughs> doom and gloom from the development side. Thank you, Juno Blees, formerly a Riot, for jumping in and echoing exactly what I'm saying here. Her quote tweet reads, I can't disagree with this one more. Whenever a game disrupts the industry and delights players beyond expectations, it absolutely raises industry and genre standards regardless of why and how. We should look at the Larian success story and ask ourselves, how are we going to make our games better and create the next games that shake up the industry? Players should and must always expect more from us, never less. Thank you. I implore AAA devs to look at these games that are being celebrated and look at your pipeline to see why the consumer is getting frustrated about the experience I outline in this video. And obviously try and make an improvement because telling me how hard it is when you're breaking profit and revenue records isn't a super compelling argument from the customer's perspective. Is Baldur's Gate 3 an outlier? Yes, but I for one wish it could become the standard and being told to shut up because I don't know game design doesn't feel super constructive, but hey, I'm just some idiot on the internet who doesn't know anything about game design. I guess I'll just go buy my horse armor and call it a day. Enjoy your $20 on top of your $100 for the collector's edition on top of your $15 for the battle pass. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below because I get why you're frustrated and it's really frustrating to see people not saying, hey, maybe we could learn a thing or two from Larian. I'm enduring Baldur's Gate 3, and I hope game development continues to grow from where it is today. I hope you do too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And for more on all things gaming, keep it right here on IGN. Dude, protect this man, chat. This is not me throwing shade at IGN right now. I'm actually surprised IGN greenlit this video. I'm amazed they just let the man rip like this on the main channel. That's fantastic the monetization in games uh, has become worse it makes me wonder like where things are going to be if it continues like where things are going to be you know for for the future of gaming we've got to quit rewarding bad practices that's just the reality of it we talked about it here recently even with destiny and like the event pass don't buy don't buy that shit. imagine picking up a game paying for the whole game imagine having to only have access to those things within the game when you buy them and then on, on top of that we get told that armor sets that we used to get every annual expansion was just not in the budget and then the the comment that follow after that was well it's not within the budget but no one wore those armor sets anyway so what does it even matter no one wore it because the artist working on it i would even be surprised if the artist was even told to like make that armor set ball and I would highly doubt the annual free armor set that was given to us via the expansion was actually an artist being told, hey, make this a banger armor set. I bet they were just told, hey, just put something out there. You know, we as gamers have got to quit rewarding bad practices. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.